three, two, one, and we are back. <clears throat> Tonight's an exciting one. It's goals, and I am huge on goals. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> I'm at it now. <laughs> you, guys, you guys can fuck off. <laughs> I cannot be in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, and we're back. Finally, episode four, and this is an exciting one. It's on goals. Obviously, we've taken a little while to get here. A few editing glitches. So shout out to Max, our chief coordinator, editor. Had a few technical issues, and I just want to give a shout out to Max, who none of you would have actually seen before, but he's Max one who makes every, he makes everything work in the background, and we have proven countless times now that we cannot operate without him which is why there's been such a big delay between the, the last couple of episodes. Um, but here we are. So we are back with an uh, exciting episode. We're going to be talking about goals. Um, and... Dom, tell us. Goals, what do they mean to you? Um, so I think one of the big things that I've learned since being at Yo is the importance of actually having goals. Um, I always remember that like you and Ryan would always make sure that we had like super lofty goals, stuff that we we're always working towards um, and really like push all of us to make sure that we weren't setting stuff that was like too easily achievable. Yeah. I remember like the incentives when we used to run <coughs> the incentives. Like you'd, you'd go, you'd look at the incentive at the start and be like, oh my God, that's so big. Like there's no way on earth we're ever going to be able to achieve that. And then by like week three or week four, you're like, wait, holy shit, like we're way closer to achieving this than I thought we would be during this time. So I think that's like one of the big things that rubbed off on me, especially in the early days of being at Yo, is like don't set your goals too low because you can definitely always achieve more. So true. It's actually super frustrating as well. We have it, don't we? When we sometimes launch them <clears throat> and it takes people, it almost takes them like until they're 60% of the way through they they're commit. like, oh, we can achieve this. And all of a sudden you get this like massive outflow of work. It's like if you'd have just believed from the start, you'd have made your lives way easier. But people still go out there and they hit them. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. Derek, goals to you in a summary. <clears throat> what do they mean to me? Yeah. Um, well, what they mean to me is uh, it gives me and other people drive to do things and reach heights that they wouldn't have otherwise reached. Yeah. <clears throat> I think without having goals in place, it's hard to get, like, not as hard to get, it's not as hard to get far in life, but it's hard to get as far as you could have got, if that makes sense. Yeah. So by having big goals and working towards them, I think it can help pull people forward and, yeah, just get them to achieve things that they might not have thought was ever possible. What about you, Nif? Why do you think it's important to go? My like, you're, like, the fucking chief goal officer of the, of the CGO. <laughs> CGO, the, the chief um, goal officer of Yo. Like, you're always the person who makes people set goals. Because it gives them reason to fucking get up and do something. And either if it's when they're riding at the top of the wave, when everything's going well, or at the bottom of it, if they know what they're actually reaching for, they know why they're doing it. Um, and for me, I've seen like people at the bottom that have pulled themselves out of like really shit places just through setting a goal. But I've also seen people at the top that have set like this huge fucking thing they want to achieve and they've just taken it to the next level. So I think it's just maybe my personal way of operating and getting the most out of people, but also getting the most out of myself. And it just makes it fun and it's a game because you set something, you go there, you achieve it, and then, all right, cool, I've done that. What's next? So for me, I think it's just my personal way that I've learn to operate life by right what's next cool go achieve that and it's just my way of pulling myself forward and obviously that's rubbed off on on others nice and when when you set goals do you like do you like break them up into like different categories or do you just have like here's my current goals no 100 percent, they are broken up into categories there's always like the big level top one but then i'll break it up so maybe it might be like financial 
fitness, <coughs> health, um, happiness. Yeah. We'll do that as well. So, you know, that's how I break them up. And like when when you're setting goals, like what does that what does that look like? In my opinion, it has to be a measurable thing. <coughs> Cause like if you can measure the goal, you can work towards an accurate thing. I think the reason why goals are so effective is because you're pulled towards a uh, driving towards one particular thing. Yeah. It's not a vague that's why I don't think vague goals work very well. They like, don't work. They're just <clears throat> massive. Well, all right, it might pull you forward a bit. Yeah. <coughs> but, but if you like, don't know the exact steps that are needed, yeah. then it's just fucking woo-wah. Yeah. Not the woo-woo, the woo-wah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like if you want to, let's say, lose weight, lose weight, or if you want to make or save money or like whatever, it's like it's such a rough goal that because it's rough, it's not really set in stone in your mind, yeah. in my opinion anyway. And um, it won't, it won't like accelerate you towards it because it's so rough as well. Whereas when you put like a figure on it or you put like some sort of metric that can be measured, you see the progress and you see how far away you are and you instantly realize how achievable it is in a much shorter time frame than you even expect as well. Like 20 pull-ups. Like 20 pull-ups. <coughs> I read something like. super interesting about this the other day. It wasn't actually goal-related. Um, but it was basically saying that if you have a problem, you need to write out a calculation of how to fix it. So how can I, what can I use that most people have? All right. So say that someone has 10,000 pounds worth of credit card debt and they're like, right, I fucking, I, my goal is to, that's what we, we hit, used to hear this a lot, didn't we? People have debt mm-hmm. and they'd be like, right, my goal is to clear off my debt. Yep. And that'll be it. And yep. they'd say, right, I want to do it by this date. And they wouldn't go no further. It's weird. I realized recently um, that you need to calculate the exact steps required for it to come clear. Otherwise, it's just like brain fog that you know, all right, cool, that's what I want to do. But where you don't know exactly what you need to yeah. do it, you never actually start. Well, you, you slowly do, <coughs> but it's not as clear. We had a similar thing with like Ben West. Obviously, he crushed it last year. He bought his, bought his first house. Just for anyone who doesn't know, Ben West is he's one of our field sales guys. Yeah. Yo. Young. 20 like he's like the perfect person for just following right let's go crush this <clears throat> he now wants to buy more he obviously had a little bit of a slow start to the year but he's now well on his way to catching up but we sat down at the start of the year and he had this big goal of right i want two properties by the end of the year we didn't take the time to actually break it down step by step um to some degree he knew what he needed to do but then he got a little bit behind but now we we then stopped and i was like fuck what's going on and we calculated it down to like the finest fucking detail of what he needs to do on like a daily or a weekly basis. And it's like the clearest thing ever. And his stats have just shot through the roof since we've done that the last three or four weeks. Yeah. He just knows exactly what he needs to do to go and now achieve what he wanted to achieve. Yeah. And it applies to, I think, anything, whatever your goal can be and what area of life as well. Because I know different people have different focuses. So I might be on fitness. If you can break down exactly what that is, it's way more easier to achieve than being like, all right, cool, I need to eat healthy. What exactly am I going to eat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As right. opposed to if you count your macros or whatever it is, you then know, okay, cool, that is what's going in my body. That's yeah. what I need to burn. And it's like, uh, we've spoken about this before, but like talking about <coughs> the difference between like habits and goals. Like your habits are the things that build into your goals. Remember that habits tracking sheet you showed me years yeah, ago? Yeah. I fucking live off that shit now. Um, we'll share a copy of everyone at the bottom of this podcast. Yeah. Um, but every single morning I'll go in, yes or no box, green or green or red, and it's like that habit habit tracking sheet is wild. Yeah, and that ultimately is what keeps you on track towards yeah, your 100%. goals, and it makes it very very easy for you to see. Like, have I completed these daily habits? Yes. If you have, then you are taking steps towards your goals every single day. Yeah. For me, it's a game as well because when you see all of that sheet green, yeah, you do not want to be dropping in a red no. Yeah. So it just turns it into a game again. Yeah. And um, it's uh, <coughs> that course I was telling you about, what I was telling you to earlier, that I was, I've started. And it's actually, there was a section on goals, ironically, yesterday. Um, and it said, obviously, you need, and it's kind of what we do already, you have your top level, and then you break it down into, like, yearly. So even if it's, like, one, three, five, ten years, and then you break it down to monthly and then daily. The daily can be habits. Yeah, yeah, of course. And yeah. stuff that contributes to the larger goal. 
And basically, what one big thing that people need to make sure they don't do is don't cut, sh- take a shortcut on like a daily thing, which then pushes back the longer term goal. Yeah. Okay. Does that makes sense. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it's like the scenario is like <laughs> it's a, it was about a writer and setting a goal of like writing a thousand words a day and getting through it. And they're like, oh, actually, I'll do 1,250. But their main goal was to write like incredible, incredible books for people to read. But they sacrificed, they did the 1,250, but the last 250 words were just bullshit. Yeah. So they got this like short term tick, but the long term goal wasn't aligned with because they were just writing kind of jargon for right, the last right, okay. fifth, which is quite interesting. Mm. And that's quite easy in life to sometimes do that. Like, All right, cool, I just got to do this. But really, does it actually align with the one, five, 10, 15 year goal where you're actually going? That's quite it's cool. kind of like making sure that what you're doing in the present time is not sabotaging, making you sa- sabotaging your future self sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's, cool. That's quite cool for me. Nice. And I think that kind of leads into like where you said like 10, 5, 10, 15 year goal or whatever. Like the way I like to think of it is like you have like three different things, right? You've got like your habits, which is like your daily. Yeah. You've then got like your goals, which are like, crystal clear set in stone things that you want to achieve but then you have like your overall vision so like the vision is like the real long term it doesn't necessarily have to have like strict here's exactly what i want here's exactly when i want it by here's exactly but like you have like an overall vision for like where you want things to be in the next like however long however long you think in terms and just to be clear for people when you say vision a lot of people get confused like you say oh set a big goal like if you're not in the zone of setting goals all the time like it can be quite intimidating yeah, yeah, for a lot of people my easiest thing to do for like if if you are completely new to setting like big goals in life is just pitch yourself like where is that like what is the yeah. ideal scene to say that you would like to be in and then backtrack from that like yeah. how can you provide that life like where is it what's it doing and it may be like completely out of what you're currently working on yeah and but you at least then know, cool, right? When do I want to be there by? Right, these are the changes I need to make, or I need to do this or that. I think that's quite a cool way to really find out, right? What is the long term effect that I want to have, or like, do I have a big goal just to change the world? Yeah. Like my biggest thing that I've been into the last three years or five years, is just helping people. Recently, I've been realigning myself, and it's like, right, how can we do that more? Yeah. Obviously, with Yo Academy or whatever we're gonna do, but just getting out there. Helping fucking educate people and crushing it, crushing goals. And I think that's more vision based, right? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hundred percent vision based. And I think like one of the things that I did an exercise like before I actually started yo, of um, it's called like your perfect day. So like you write down from like beginning to end of day, like what the perfect day would look like. So if you're someone who's like struggling to set goals and you're like, oh, I don't really know what I want, picture your perfect day. Like, what is, the, what is the ideal scenario for you? Like, what do you want your life to look like? So picture yourself five years from now. What is the perfect day in your mind? Like, where are you waking up? Who are you waking up with? What does that look like? What does it smell like? What do you feel like? What does, like, down to, like, the tiniest detail, like, describe your perfect day. All right, let's do it with you. What would yours be? <laughs> this is sick. My perfect day. <coughs> yeah. So you wake up. <clears throat> yeah. Where are you? Somewhere hot. Nice. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect. What else? What like, happens next? So you wake up, you get out of bed. I don't know. You make some cocoa pops. <laughs> what would you do? Um you, if you could literally do anything in the world. Okay. It would probably be something to do with um like travelling and a yeah, but hot what would you do first? Like so you wake up, you're in a hot country. Okay. What imagine your perfect day. So what do you do? Do you get up? Do you go to a jiu-jitsu class do you go yeah to I'd, the gym? I'd go to some sort of fitness thing um like eat really really well like clean and fresh food perfect so you have a real nice healthy breakfast yeah then what um you come back from the gym have a shower it would be jam-packed with fucking everything <laughs> <laughs> um it would be anything and everything in the sun just There's in case outdoors. anyone doesn't know Derek, if you watch any of our videos from yeah. when we've done Yo Incentives and you see how jam-packed they are, because they're normally like three days long, you'll understand what Derek means of jam-packed. Yeah. It likes to fit a lot into his time. We spoke about <coughs> this in it's episode... It's fucking sick. I love that. 
one or two we spoke about it's fitting more into your time yeah but yeah okay cool so it, your it, day's jam-packed <clears throat> full of it would be fucking depending on where it is in the world like like surfing playing golf playing football skating tennis um literally i, don't, I can't even like put it all on yeah. like they would just be fucking back to back that sort of stuff um but easily but also like it, it's not it's not just that stuff like it's all i would also like to be obviously f- focusing on some sort of work which is being productive and like helping people and um that in my eyes in the perfect world would be like helping to motivate people and helping to get people to unlock their potential something and, something along and, and already from that just like short exercise and that's without us really going into too much detail with it mm. it's very clear from that what is important to you so therefore it's very easy to work back from that of like okay that's what that looks like how do i get there okay right so you want to be in the sun okay so first you need, you realize that you need to leave the country because <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the sun you definitely ain't in the uk except today which we're recording on the hottest day of the fucking year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, clear, but clearly, being being in the sun is important to you, so therefore you would need to get out of the country. Yep. So first you need to take steps to get out of the country. So what does that look like financially? Do you get what I mean? Like from yeah, there, yeah, it's very yeah, easy it. to start working back, working back the steps of like, okay, here's what my perfect day looks like. This is my vision for the future. What do I need to do to get there? And then from there, it's very easy to come back, like take it back a step. And like you said, go down into the real detail of it, but like take a step back. Okay, right. What do what goals would I need to achieve to get to that? Yeah, yeah. So like, I've done this exercise fucking over and over. <laughs> yeah, again. yeah. Kind of similar. Hot place. I know I'm waking up on a boat. I'm waking up. I'm walking outside. There's fresh fruit. Maybe go swimming, wakeboarding, and then I go into work mode. And it's when I know that's what I want to be doing that I know that I'd never fucking cash out and sell yo. Yeah. Because I want to be building that still around us, whether it's yo, yo academy, whatever we're doing. Yeah. But I know I'd go into like some sort of focus state for like two, three hours, catch on my emails, have some lunch, and then enjoy the rest of the day with like friends, family, yeah. do whatever it is. But just definitely exploring getting out there. Mm. So again, I know I know all of us I know yeah. from my discussions are very aligned on getting the fuck out of the UK at some point <laughs> yeah can't say what's yours it's pretty, you know, was, the reason why we get on so well is because all of our goals are pretty aligned. fucking well aligned you know like we all want to get out of the UK <laughs> and we all want to wake up and just do things that we enjoy in life ultimately and be focused on building stuff I think that's what yeah. all excites us the most is like yeah, that, that's, building that's definitely one thing that would want to be my is creating yeah like you go around anywhere you walk around and like the buildings you see the cars you see all these things have been created by someone yeah. that always plays in my mind that other people have created these amazing products amazing things groups of people like companies like pe- someone thought of this idea and now it's yeah, like in, well, was, in our yeah. reality this was in I someone's always, head at some point <laughs> yeah i walk around all the time and i just think fuck all these fucking amazing things around me someone had the idea this was just an idea at one point now someone's made this. Like, what have I made? I always think like, oh, oh shit, I should be doing more. I should be creating more. So that would be a big focus for I sure. I think part of that as well is trying to work out how you can cut the shit out of life yeah. to give yourself time to be creative. Because it's not easy to go into creative mode when no. you're kind of doing day-to-day, hustling, yeah. doing whatever we're doing. Yeah, yeah. But if that's what you want, which is fucking sick, and I love that. And again, we were I was speaking to these two before we started the podcast. There's, um, I've forgotten his name. What's the book I'm reading at the moment? Naval Ravikant. Wild fucking sick guy. Um, created loads of companies, but he, basically there's a YouTube Angel video. Investor. Angel investor now. He is now. There's a YouTube video and it's basically saying to him, like, you, he's telling people you just don't want to be CEO. Don't worry if everyone listens to this. I'm not going to be leaving anytime soon, but at some point in the future and it basically says to put you in that creative mindset. Yeah, you need to delegate, like you need to delegate yeah, the shit. And get the fuck out of it just so you can then go into creative mode for the company right. to be able to create and come up with cool ideas. But this is actually kind of why the Yo is set up the way it is now. Yeah. Because a few years ago... We're getting there. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there, but we've already taken steps towards delegating some of the 
shit that you shouldn't be doing so that you can focus so so that you can focus on doing the shit that you're good at do you know what i mean um still not quite there yet no no but like the worry do you remember when we had that meeting with ahmed and ahmed forced us to (laughs) but that aligns with kind of the goals i was talking about Mm. earlier like imagine waking up in that cool space yeah, yeah. wherever and being it is creative, in the world and, and just going into creative mode that cool right yeah. what impact can we have how can we help people nice fucking cool and what are some ways that you guys find to keep yourselves aligned with your goals make sure that you keep working towards them because I think one of the things that a lot of people struggle with is staying true to their goals None. I know all of us here I know all of us here are enough. human yeah, like yeah, we're all human we and here, over every now and again. but yeah. all of us have goals that we are much better at sticking to over other goals that habit tracking sheet i'm telling <laughs> you it's like my fucking gospel when i really want to be in the zone yeah. and working towards it habit tracking sheet writing my goals down daily um that's quite a cool one as well when you write it and you visualize it I definitely it's like get not back into oh, habit doing that. i want to do this it's like no i am this so like you're already yeah. that being you're already that person that you want to be mm-hmm. and writing it down in the same context as that that's quite cool mine would just be um as often as possible I try and zoom out on my life. Yeah. So it's very easy to get stuck in the moment and like stuck in a mood or Mm -hmm. whatever. And if you're trying to work towards a goal and it's like one of those days where you just, you're not feeling it, I'll always try and be like, right, let me just back up a second and try and like zoom out. Like what, what is going on right now that's making me not want to achieve this goal? Like, is it something that's actually pretty minor that, in never mind like a year's time won't matter like tomorrow probably won't matter yeah do you know what i mean and um there's lots of things that can make you for whatever reason not want to keep working towards your goal every day but um yeah i just always try and take like a step back in my mind and be like right okay what's actually matters in, in like to me the other people around me what is actually important and what am i trying to achieve so, and I do that with myself a lot, a lot, a lot. It's what and we I, say. Sorry, go on. Uh, well, I don't know what I was going to say, but like, um, I've just got into the habit of doing it, basically. And that's a very good habit for me because, um, yeah, it just keeps me driven long term, basically. So, yeah, what are you saying? It's sick and I just got excited because it's what we're saying about questioning yourself. Yeah, like I said, I can't so remember what episode decision, I did it in. It's okay. like, we said it like fucking 10 minutes ago before yeah. we started this. And I said it in episode two of the, this podcast. Asking right? yourself, right, who is that person that's saying that to me? Yeah. Like we question, think, whenever anyone says something to you, you question it. But when you're saying it yourself, question mark, where is that actually coming from? Like, does yeah. that align with what I'm doing right now? It's very easy to let your own thoughts and let your own internal dialogue dictate what's happening without ever questioning it you know hmm. it's very easy for you to be like oh no it's fine i don't need to go to the gym because fucking blah 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 and it's very easy to not question that monologue yeah, because yeah, you yeah. reason in your head why you shouldn't do something yeah and you've told yourself it so therefore you should believe it yeah yeah when yeah. actually that's completely false yeah. <laughs> yeah. you shouldn't just believe it just because it's come from yourself yeah like if someone went if someone was telling you you shouldn't go to the gym today you'd be like why the fuck would I not want to go yeah, to the gym? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Whereas when it comes from you, you're like, oh, I shouldn't go to the gym today because oh, and you start you've start. you had a really yeah. tough day and it's been real hard and obviously it's quite hot outside. So obviously, you don't want to, do you know what I mean? Like you that's don't a, question that as much. That's that's another thing I try not to do is um, in general, I don't feel, I don't think it feels natural to me to sit still and do nothing. Yeah. Um, that doesn't, I don't enjoy it. Yeah. Like I always want to be doing something, getting out, doing something new, creating something new, whatever it is. Um, and so that like thing is I try not to think I try to just do it as if and where possible. Like if I'm ever having, let's say gym, it's easy to talk about. Don't want to go to the gym. I'll just get in my car and I will not think about it until I'm at the gym. Oh, it's too late now. Yeah. I'm already here. Yeah. I do that. Like, with try and just try to just take that action. Even though you're like fighting against yourself, <laughs> Just do. Don't yeah. talk. Just do. Yeah. I try and try and do that as much as so, for some of them. I always try and take out. So I work out in life. Right, what is something that could trip me up? Let's go to gym in the evening, and that's normally when you probably don't want to go. It gets to the end of the day. So for me, I'll just calculate my life in a way that I'll insert stuff. So right, get gym, 
gym done in the morning. And then you know, right, okay, cool. You've done it. Coming back to the habit tracking sheet. I'm not going to fall over. I'm not going to miss it. That's my way of handling that. Yeah, what well, that is definitely you should you should align your life. For you. Yeah, align your life around your goals. If it's yeah. something that's important to you, you should do everything in your power to make <coughs> sure that you're here. So if that means like working your life out in a way that means prioritizing certain things at certain times of the day, just because that's when it's easiest to get it done. Because that's ultimately the best way to for you to achieve your goals is make it as easy for make yourself as, as possible. possible. Yeah, <laughs> make it as easy as possible. Like yeah. if you make it easy for yourself, like if I come home from work and my jujitsu bag is already packed by the front door and all I need to do is just get upstairs and take off my work clothes Change, yeah. then it's pretty hard for me to not go so you sit down for 20 minutes though suddenly you sit down for 20 minutes if if luckily my jujitsu classes start, start at half six and I only get home at six at, so I have to fucking leave straight away whereas suddenly if I've got 20 minutes to sit down it's a different story you know yeah yeah for sure and so, alongside that I think it's good to build a team around you that have similar yeah, goals accountability definitely because then straight away that can carry you through the hard days. Accountability sometimes. is massive. I know. I know. For me, like accountability is definitely for me. one of the biggest things. Like the times when I but you put accountability best. and discipline next to each other, you got a pretty fucking strong recipe for yeah. success. I don't even think you really need discipline. Discipline can be had. You could you can like fake discipline by just making your life easy. And setting things up in a way that means you, it's impossible for you to avoid doing it's it. It's true. Right? Like, if you wake up at 5.30, your gym stuff's already on the side. It doesn't take discipline to fucking get yourself up and go. Like, you've already done it. You just need to actually get out of bed. Like, it doesn't take a huge amount of discipline to do that. If everything's already set up in a way yeah, yeah. that means best thing to do, set an alarm on your phone, put your phone in another room. <laughs> also, it doesn't take discipline to get up then because you need to get up and turn the fucking alarm off and you're up <laughs> then, so you might as well get up. But again, coming back to the goals and the habits making sure your life is set up in a way that it's going to help you succeed. Exactly. So if you're up late at night, fucking chilling on Instagram till 11, 12 at night. Exactly. You're not getting up at half five. Yeah. Whereas if you're disciplined the night before and you're like, no, it's nine o'clock, I'm putting my phone down. Yeah. That then leads to the next success and all of a sudden you have this huge fucking compound effect of crushing it and then you're awake, you're alert in the office. Like, life just aligns itself when yeah. you're fucking ticking all of these things off. But again, that you like, you don't even need massive amounts of discipline to do that. All you need to do is just say, at 10 o'clock, I go to bed. 10 o'clock comes, you go to bed. I sleep with my phone in the other room. Put your phone in the other room. That doesn't take a huge amount of discipline. It just takes for you to actually just... Make a conscious effort. Make a conscious yeah, effort. Yeah, yeah. Like, for me, discipline is like keeping yourself in something that's really hard. That's discipline. It's like when something's... When the going's getting tough, then that's when discipline kicks in, you know? When you're really having to, like, fight that inner voice yeah, of, like... Yeah. This is fucking rough. I want to stop. I yeah. want to stop, but I need to continue. How do you fight that? What's your method? So we all have different methods <laughs> just, on that. <laughs> just grit my, a little bit. Grit my teeth and just fucking get on with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, but also doing that as often as possible. I think. Yeah. Doing getting in those uncomfortable situations as often as pos possible and not letting yourself back up. Yeah, I use fear a lot, so I'm like, I do not want to be that person that fails. Yeah. So, like for example, this fucking bike ride Sunday, I know that the next stage, if I didn't do that with everyone, yeah. would be Monday morning or something that I'll be fuming with myself yeah. and I'll yeah. be disappointed in myself. So I'll use that to make me go and do it. Yeah. You're a lot more disciplined than me because I'm not fucking doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I just know I'll be fucking fuming with myself when I see people doing it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I could have done it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm definitely using fear as well. I think as well, like backing yourself into a corner with something so that you're in that situation. Do you know what I mean? Like when we, I remember when we um climbed... What's that one that's gone called? Ben oh, Nevis. Yeah. We're kind of Ben Nevis. Can't really put yourself in any more of an uncomfortable situation than that. But what are you going to do? Sit up there and fucking freeze. Do you know what was more uncomfortable for me when we did free peaks? And I didn't find that bad because no, it was nice. No, but <laughs> it was the fact, I probably wasn't as fit as I was when we did Nevis. Definitely true. But it was the fact that we, how many of us did that? 50? Yeah. Was it about 50 of us that did free uh, peaks? I think there maybe was, less because it was two vans of 20. There was it? two vans. I think it was about it was 20 in each van, maybe 15 in each van. 30, 35. Okay, cool. But I knew that there was 30 people there that watching were part you. of the company. Watching. That were part of the inner circle. Yeah, yeah. And they were there. And I was like, let's fucking do this. <laughs> so I, I knew what carried me through that. I didn't have a fucking choice to not do it. Yeah. Mm. And that wasn't like the most comfortable thing. Like Nevis, what is like three, four of us. It's like, okay, cool, we'll yeah. do it. 
But there was like a different level of pressure, which wasn't even climbing the fucking mountains. Yeah. It's just Having knowing that I just you. couldn't not do it because of who was fucking there and watching within a group, you know, like you can't have a leader be like, nah, shit. Sorry, guys. I can't do no more. My leg hurts. Well, I think that also relates back to goals because that's that shows the importance of other people having goals. Yeah. You were surrounded by people who were probably thinking the same thing. Like, oh, fuck, I don't want to really be doing this, but I also don't want to, like, look like, like I can't, yeah, look like an idiot and I can't do it in front of Nate. Yeah. But you were probably thinking, oh, I don't want to look, I don't want to look like an idiot yeah, in front yeah, of them. 100%. Like, it's like, that's the importance of someone having a goal. It's not just for you. It's actually, it has the impact on the others around you and it helps them achieve this. And that example was perfect. Sure. And that's literally, like, it's accountability. That's, li- that's literally what it is. It like, is yeah. Yeah. When you have other people around you who are also achieving stuff, like, you're always going to be held accountable. And hopefully you have people who will call you out when you're and being a little bitch. <laughs> but when you're also achieving your goals, you're helping others around you. Yeah, 100%. But like, it's pulling everyone forward in the same momentum, you know? Well, they say, don't you? They say the average of the five, peop- five closest people around you, like, or the yeah. five people you spend your most time with. Yeah. If you're surrounded by people who are crushing their goals all the time, it's going to be very hard for you to just sit on your ass and be it's like, the yeah, woo-woo. This. It's the universe. <laughs> yeah, it's the universe. It's yeah. the woo-woo. <laughs> exactly. But it is. Like, if you've got... If all of your best mates are out all the time, just crushing goals, making money, living a happy life, they're healthy, like... Fucking drives you. Are you... What, are you going to sit there and just not do that? Like... It's never going to happen, it's is it? Just like, it's just, just, just doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. And that shows the importance of like surrounding yourself with a good circle. And again, we've probably and vice touched, versa. touched on this again in another episode. But like, you'll see, like when we're talking about these things, like everything that we talk about does link together. Like your goals links back to the stuff that we're talking in episode one and in episode two. Like all of these things come together to help push you towards the vision that you have for your life. Just going yeah. out there as well and giving some advice to people that haven't been setting goals. Start off with something small as well. Get the quick wins in. Get the. I know quick we talk wins. about. I know we talk. I know we talk about setting big goals. Yeah. But that doesn't mean setting something that is unachievable. It just means setting something that is a good goal to achieve. I just it? yeah. And from like fucking ten, fifteen years of doing this, we now know more and more we can achieve. And that is my biggest fucking regret: is not setting big enough goals. Yeah. So now we set them very fucking big, but. We Get still have wins. small quick wins in. It's like you were talking about the incentive earlier. Like we, I remember when we were doing incentives every like two, three months yep. and we were hitting them every single time without fail. I remember it was fucking wild. Mm-hmm. And then we missed one. And then we set the one the month after, which was still in line, the same numbers of the one we'd missed, but no one believed that they could achieve it. Sure. Yeah. Remember yeah. it was a fucking shambles. Mm-hmm. And I think the similar thing happened the month after and we're like, what the fuck's going on? And then we just lowered the target a little bit and we weren't happy with lowering it, but we knew just to get the belief back into all the people that are part of it to lower it. And then they ticked it off and then we put it straight back up the next month. And all of a sudden it's literally the wackiest thing yeah. from mindset and belief in what, like in oneself of what they can actually achieve. So yeah, if you're not like, if you're not a regular goal setter and it's not part of your life, definitely get something, get a low level quick win that you can do, tick off, achieve. Even if it's like a one, two, three week goal, yep. do that and then build up. And then before you know it, you'll be setting big 10 years of life goals. But even with those big mm-hmm. goals, try and have quick wins along the way to those big goals. For sure. Yeah. Like when you've got a big goal in mind, have like things that you can tick off and say like pat yourself on the back for along the way towards that big goal so that you do you don't just feel like you're constantly chomping away at this monster that True. like I've you're got never doing moment. anything you know whereas like when you've got little things along the way that you can be like right fuck, step one done step two done yeah step three done i've got this i'm not gonna share it but i've got this huge fucking thing that i'm working towards at the moment it's pretty big and i recently did the same thing so i've literally cut it up into quarters and I said, right, at each quarter, I award myself with something to say, right, cool. There is like a acknowledgeable yeah. point in time to now go. Like a stepping stone. Like yeah, you. exactly that. So no matter what it is, that's fucking great as well. Yeah. You do that. And I think, yeah, and I think you should always do that. Like have have like little things that you can tick off along the way. Like, yeah. So yeah. it's not just like this big goal. Like you've actually broken it down into like steps that you can like work towards. Mm. That's cool. Cool. And let's say... Like with, with the people around you, how do you make sure that you keep them accountable to their goals? Hmm. Obviously, we've got a goal killers 
Goal Killers group chat. Goal Killers group chat. Everyone should have their own Goal Killers group chat. Um, but like, what? What? Do, like, obviously, everyone here is a leader. We communicate. <laughs> We're all a leader here, all so like, time. you all have your own teams or people that you have to lead and ensure that they stay stuck to their goals. Like, yeah. what? What things do you do to do that? Mine's reinforcing yeah. the goal. Yeah. So it's there all the time, discussing it. Right? How's it going? Are you ready for it? Like you're making good moves towards it and just making sure that it's at the fucking, f- that it's just there, like fucking horse blinkers. That goal is in front of your face mm-hmm. at all times. Mm-hmm. And that's normally. M- mine would be one. more, if I was having a discussion with someone, then their goals, I want to keep them driven on it. And they're not like they've lost the, pur- like they've lost the drive for it. I would try and remind them of the purpose of it. So, yep. because that is ultimately going to, keep them driven long term if they are remembering like not the thing they want but why they want it like yeah. what what is the reason why you made this goal like that's probably more of a driver than the goal itself do you know what i mean like yeah if you want a fancy car it's like or well, if you think about why you want that fancy car that'll probably not you don't want it because you want a fancy car no it's because of a reason driving it yeah yeah you've got some reason in you that made you want to make that goal in the first place yeah. I would try and realign them with the purpose of why they made this in the first place. And that should, they'll realize it themselves. And they'll be like, actually, this is important to me. Like, it is important that I actually take these steps for myself so that I can get this thing. I think that's something I wish you didn't even mention when we're talking about setting goals, is start with why. Yeah, so I start, start, start yeah. with why. Like, why, so why do like, you want yeah. to achieve that? Mm-hmm. Like, again, it comes back to doing the, what's your perfect day look like? Why is that your perfect day? Like, yeah. what is it about that that makes you happy? Like, what is it that makes you want to achieve that? Mm-hmm. Because actually, you're right. When you have a why behind a goal, mm. it's a much more powerful goal is, and you yeah. will stick to it yeah. because mm. it's not just, oh, I want to watch because what, just cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, there's, that's there's, a very there's fictitious no, goal that... There's no why there. And, and also, I think when you don't have like a why or a purpose behind your goal, when you get it, Oh, I like this watch because this watch is cool. You get it, it's like, oh, cool. It's like two days later, it's like, oh, great. I got this watch. It's yeah. right. It's like, see, on know. the flip of that, though, I think it's also good to do that because it then teaches you for the next goal. Cool, yeah. right. What yeah, do I want definitely. as the next yeah. big thing? Good like, for having so people that have yeah, them goals. Sure. It's definitely not a bad thing. Definitely not. I think there's a huge positive to having materialistic goals because you definitely. then achieve them, take it off. And it's weird. You go through this weird peak in life where you can go up the materialistic path and all of a sudden you reach the top of it and then all of a sudden you want fucking nothing. Well, you'll catch me in a Yoti every single day of my life now. Hmm. But you have to go well, up look at that. us, we're all literally sat here wearing your Telecom t-shirts. And it's not, beca- it. and it's not because none of us have got, like, haven't got a wardrobe, wardrobe full of nice clothes. Yeah, We all do. We've all got fucking nice clothes that we could wear instead, but we're all sat here in your, your Telecom t-shirts. Yeah. like sweating <laughs> yeah sweating <laughs> but but it's not even like that materialistic goals are not Bad, good yeah. like they're good things but i'm saying like Why? let's say yeah. yes like maybe you want a, a watch because that's what your your granddad always had or do you know what i mean like having that why yeah, yeah. doesn't matter if it's material it could be anything but it's like having that purpose behind the goal will keep it keep you aligned i think i think that's good as well but also the feeling behind it yeah yeah that, that's yeah like sort of how, how are you gonna feel or why is it and that's another big thing that I do when goal setting with other people, mm. especially if it's short term and it's quite a new thing. Like, right, you want to sit there on New Year's Eve. Where do you want to be? Rah, 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 rah. Build out a big picture. Cool. What would you like to sit there and look back and be like, right, I've ticked off this year. And you can get quite excited about that. Mm. Just reflecting. You know that moment. And you can always think back to a New Year's Eve when you're in a cool place, normally like if we're skiing or somewhere. Everything's crazy and you're like, cool, what have I done this year? Yeah. Like how would you like to feel in six months' time? Mm, that's great. Yeah. And you can get quite deep on it <laughs> to think, all right, cool, actually. What what do I want to look back and be like, all right, cool, I've tipped that off. What's what's the next one? Yeah, yeah. Instead of just kind of like drifting through life yeah. and thinking, oh, all right, I'll do it later. And that's the other thing with goals as well. You need to just fucking get started. Yeah. Never ever think, oh, yeah, it's fine. I'll save more money when I earn more money. Like, it just doesn't happen. That day never comes. It never fucking comes. Just make a decision to do something. Start today and commit, even yeah. if you start very, very small. I think one thing that you kind of touched on there as well when you're talking about thinking about the feeling mm-hmm. is, like, a good way of thinking about your goals is to actually, like, visualize them. Like, yeah. 
when you have this goal in your mind. I always remember this. I always remember this just because I remember hearing a story about Conor McGregor driving around in a shit car around Dublin. <laughs> in his head, he's picturing that he's driving around in a Bentley. And he's there like, thinking like, one day I'll have a Bentley. One day, this is a Bentley. This is a Bentley. This is a Bentley. And he's visualising himself like driving that fucking Sick. Bentley, you know? And that, whenever I think about that, I always think about like how important it is like to have visualisation and like have like really think through again perfect day whatever you want to call it like to really think through like what does this feel like how can i put myself closer to this goal and make it feel like i've already achieved this goal before i've actually achieved it because again back to the woo woo <laughs> i think it's important to like make it feel like you've achieved it and yeah. know what that feeling feels like really like identify with that sense of like accomplishment mm, even right. before you've actually achieved it and i know the i know the one that stands out to me and i'll let you tell the story there because it's uh it's your story but the penthouse like That's that the is the perfect 100%. example of bringing a goal into fruition and making it real life yeah because of the story behind that and i'll just let you tell the story behind that because you, it's your story don't want to tell the story <laughs> do you want to tell the story Sorry. No, um, yeah so okay sorry. so yeah that was definitely a big massive one for me like obviously when was this like 2015 um, obviously seeing the Moresby Tower being built in um, Ocean Village in Southampton and um, me and my friend Isaac were always going to a cafe called Cafe Number 4 which is on uh, the road next to it and uh, we'd always sit outside, sipping our lattes. <laughs> <Chilling. Ooh. laughs> Pretty cool, right? Um, and yeah, but we just basically we just sit there and just talk for hours and hours and hours about all sorts. And um, I remember we'd always talk, we'd always end up on the subject, and we'd always be talking about that penthouse up there. Like, oh my god, that looks fucking sick. Just and for like, people who don't know, Moresby Tower is like the tallest apartment building in. Hampshire, in Hampshire, I, in Hampshire. In Hampshire, when I got it, I can't remember. Maybe not now, but yeah. Yeah. So having the penthouse Wild. is like that's like the shit, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. The coolest apartment you could have in Southampton. Like, there's literally nowhere higher. Hundred percent. All panoramic windows all around the front of it, so you can see right over Ocean Village Marina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we're just looking up at it every day, and I'm, and I've even I always sit in the seat which is facing directly Moresby Tower. Um, he always sit in the other one, and um. I just remember looking up at it every day and just like visioning, oh, I wonder what it's like up there. I really want to see what it's like up there. One day I just want to like, I just want to go up there at least just see what it's like. And then I um, uh, came home one night or whatever and, and Ryan said, oh, did you hear that they've got that, they've got a penthouse for sale in Ocean Village? I was like, which one? They were like, in the Moresby Tower. I was like, no way. I was like, no way. And, they were, and he was like, yeah, it's apparently like, the only one in the building that's not been sold yet because some that's buyer pulled wild. out, some buyer pulled out or something like that, and um, and so we were like, all right, we need to go fucking view that right now, like, <laughs> we, and we booked it for like two days away, or whatever. Um, went there and we were like, we were being showed around by the estate agent. It was like at night, so it was like dark. Um, we like, I remember for some reason we turned the lights off, or the estate agent actually turned the lights off so that we could see the city, with like all the night lights and stuff like that, and um. We were just walking around, like especially the master bedroom, Ryan's room, and like um, the state agent even walked out, and then we were just like, "Fucking hell, this is nuts!" You still get that feeling <laughs> like, when you walk in there now, though. Yeah, you do. Like, that feeling it's, never leaves. Yeah, it's just like, oh my god, I've this. never seen anything like this in my entire life, and I was just, we were just like arguing about, like, "Oh, this is my bedroom. No, this is my bedroom." Well, whatever, and. Um, and then we were like, no, nah, this is, we need this. Like, this is what we need. Like, I don't care what is going to happen. I'm going to get this somehow. And um, obviously we were young. Like, I was 19, Ryan was um, 20. 22. 22. 22. Yeah. Um, and, um, and yeah, anyway, we left and then we were just like trying to figure out ways and how the hell we could get this. Obviously quite expensive. Um, trying to get like the mortgage pass for like, six months put an offer in just to give some context behind this mm. yo had only been around what two years we'd probably filed one set of accounts mm -hmm. yeah 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 and there's a 19 year old and a 22 year old going for a million pound mortgage yeah like it's just <laughs> fucking unheard of on every single level possible yeah yeah 
It's yeah. not even in London. It's in Southampton. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. And um, yeah, so we put the offer in um, and we got it accepted. And and we were like, fuck, this is sick. But now we need to fucking yeah. get the mortgage. <laughs> How are we going to do this? And I just sort of left it to Ryan because I was just didn't have any understanding of how the hell that worked. But basically we got a call from the mortgage guy um, after about six months. Ryan got a call and he said, I've tried every single thing I can do and I cannot get you passed on this. I'm sorry. And Ryan literally said to him, you must be joking. I've got a platinum Amex. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and <laughs> he said, really? He said, yes, I've got a platinum Amex. Surely you can get me past this one. And then he's like, okay. Hung up the phone. Like 20 minutes goes by, calls Ryan back. I've got you passed. <laughs> like, what, what the fuck? That does not happen. Doesn't even make like, sense. Yeah, it, it, doesn't, no sense. Sense. it doesn't the make any sense. The sentence I, that he said doesn't even make like, any sense. It's almost like Ryan just said, yeah, I've got a queen from the cards so she'll back the mortgage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just didn't make any fucking sense. And then fucking got passed and yeah, moved in and it was just mental. It was yeah. just like, but just from like sick, like, we had, me and Isaac have been sitting outside just looking at it every day for like a year. Just like that visualization of just like, ah, oh, that is fucking sick. I just really want that thing. And it was like... It's the woo-woo. It's the universe. Yeah, just like m- putting like my focus energy. I didn't even know it was for sale. But like just so... I just had a desire and like a massive like want for this thing so much. And so did Ryan as well when he found out it was for sale. And like we were just like... we gotta get this thing and magically it, everything worked out yeah and then we wow. just managed to make it fun. work and remember what happened to your sales numbers while that was happening yeah so the obviously i was living at home before that and i like you know didn't really have any outgoings much typical out- 19 year old yeah like minimal outgoings um and my sales from when i got the apartment went up eight months in a row um and i stayed at a high consistently high level higher level than i'd ever achieved in sales before that and i'd already been in sales for um a year and a half by that point Wild. so like 18 months of already performing and a lot of experience and i'd never reached the heights and i had eight months of going up and up and up and up literally every single month then go down one month um, in a row you need to go find another apartment yeah. <laughs> yeah and yeah it was just you need to get you one of those boats like yeah <laughs> yeah it was crazy but yeah that was basically the story well, the yacht next <laughs> so sick <laughs> and again like coming back from that you can take the habits tracking sheet and almost work yourself up to a new level yeah like you did that when you were climbing obviously you, you were climbing for a different reason because there was this fucking humongous goal up there yeah yeah but i'm saying other people they can translate that and you can apply it to normal life and you, you can, can be like All right, yeah right what's the goal cool let me work towards that and all of a sudden you'll just realize that you're living in this whole new level Yep. And then you just keep leveling from that point. Yeah. That's nuts. Very I think cool. one of the I things like as well that like goes like these kind of tied together because one thing you don't realise is when you're working towards a massive goal, you've like super focused on something, it's very easy for other things to become aligned as well. Mm-hmm. Like if you're already working towards something massive, like it's very easy for you to also get better at this or become more successful at this. Because when you're in that like like in that moment or in that like period of time where it's like you're just like winning and working towards something i feel like you get in that mindset where you're just like i can fucking win at anything i can literally (laughs) i can fucking achieve anything you're like i'll do this as well and then you start fucking achieving that and you're doing really well at that as well like suddenly your fitness becomes really like really really good because you're focusing on like so much on fucking earning a certain amount of money or Mm -hmm. you're like whatever whatever it is like i feel like it's very easy to align other things when you're already in that like winning mindset yeah. you've already got like so easy. something that you're like really you just become towards. a fucking powerhouse exactly like, anything that Completely. you touch just turns to fucking <coughs> winning momentum that's what i'm looking yeah, for momentum. like once you get that momentum yeah. with like one thing it's very easy for everything it's to start like life coming just to flow yeah. yeah no matter what the fuck you want to do it just yeah. happens momentum is definitely a real thing yeah. like it just happens in any successful streak of actions that's yeah. by a person or a team you just see it. You see actual momentum being a real life thing. And like, I'm trying to break down in my head what momentum actually is. I think that it's just 
self confidence that you ha- know you have a certain ability. Yeah. It's like if you start winning at a certain football game, what actually changes? Nothing's changed. You're still the same. The opponent's still the same. But all of a sudden, you've got that confidence that actually you think that you know. It's a subconscious belief. Yeah. yeah in yourself. We saw it with self. Smithy. Smithy just like oh my god, yeah, turned yeah. it on one day. Yeah, and never like, turned it back off. And never turned it back off. <laughs> one of our, one of our sales, one guys. of our sales guys, yeah, just yeah. like, like completely changed <laughs> how much he was selling. Like yeah. how consistently. Like it was ridiculous. Just like, yeah, and then once ridiculous. he got that momentum and he got that self belief, and he was like, "Yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm fucking good at this." <laughs> and now he just literally thinks that he can just walk into anything and sign it. Like he says to me, like there was one he signed yesterday. He said he walked in the first thing they said is, "Yeah, we are not re-signing this, or we're not going ahead." He said he just laughed in his head, like this one is definitely going ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked out of the paperwork. Yeah, and it is. It's fucking mindset over everything. Yeah. Believe in yourself. That is the biggest thing. Believe, and you will make your dreams come true. Hundred percent, I agree. Dizzy even sang a song about it. <laughs> and what what do you think's like? What are some telltale signs that you're not on the right track with your goals? Like what? What? what if you're not excited I when think, you wake up. Yeah, and also if you're, if you don't, this could be, I guess, obviously related to other things, but your your daily happiness, like every day, should you should be getting happiness and satisfaction from the thing that you're doing to walk to work towards that goal yeah. do you go to bed feeling good or are you like what the fuck did i do today yeah yeah yeah. That's not a good yeah also having people around you like you can very easily get mixed up and have people that are affecting you from hitting your goals yeah you know like the wrong partner the wrong friends like and if they get in your way that can start detaching you from your goals mm-hmm. and what you're trying to achieve mm-hmm. you have someone fucking trying to pull you away from that yeah yeah for sure and what would you do in that situation? Cut come- everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Goals of number one, CGO. <laughs> no, um, I'm being serious. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, no, I I think... Um, I'll, cut for, I'll cut them for you, Derek. <laughs> huh? I'll cut them for you. It just comes back to the vision, right? Just, no, yeah, I think you, you've just got, back to that you, why. You've got to look at that purpose. Yeah. Like, if, if it's not... The thing is, is as well, one thing that I always try and bounce in my head is when like thinking about a goal or something I want to achieve, I always try and think, right, do I want this or do I want this because other people want this? Yeah. I'm trying to like really align this with myself. Do Is this actually my wantingness or do I just look at this guy achieve this thing and be like, oh, that's cool. I, I want to do the same thing. I see. You know, like that is... Very, very big difference between those two things. Yeah. You can watch something do someone do fucking something really, really sick, and yes, you may want the same thing, but is it truly oh yours? Just said it. But is it truly yours? Like, if it's yours, you will have that purpose to drive after it long term. The amount of and people that say they want something they don't actually want it. This, they think they want it. Yes. This. this oh my god, that is the summary. <laughs> Well, that's 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 the question you ask, right? It's like yeah. if you're not feeling happy, you're not moving towards that goal. Why? It's like maybe you didn't want the thing in the first place. Hundred percent. Maybe maybe you What's saw idea, yeah. maybe you saw someone do something great. Yes, you may want it as well, but actually, maybe something is more important. The to amount you in of life. people I come across on a daily basis that say they truly want something, and they just don't. Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, I want this, or I want to achieve this, or I want that. Okay, man, why don't you put in the work for it? Oh, something. I don't, know. Do something. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, but do you really want it? Yeah, yeah, I want it. All right. Well, look. Here's the steps that you need to do to get it. Yeah, I don't want it. I can't do that, man. You know, and that straight away, they just don't fucking want it enough. Yeah. Well, well I, I have. Well, this, I've had this before, like with um, like just like staff, and I, I run one of the sales teams. Well, I did run one of the sales teams in Manchester for our Manchester office, and it's like sometimes you come across people who it's like. You just have to ask them, like, look, do you actually want this? Because, like, you say that you want it, but your actions are showing me something completely different. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you say, oh, yeah, I really want to be, I want to be the best performer in this office. Or, like, But you're not putting in anywhere near the same amount of effort as the best performer in the office. And you're not turning up to work on time. And you're taking sick days. So... You say that you want this, but like, do you actually really want it? And you if don't you don't, want then it. please just be honest about it and yeah. we can just stop wasting everyone's time. Yeah. Because if you say that you want it and you're not taking any of the steps towards 
go working towards achieving it, True. then you clearly don't want it enough. And if you don't want it enough, then stop wasting your time setting this as something that you want to do and saying that you want to do it because like you're causing internal conflict in yourself with this. Like you're saying, oh, I want this. Like you're saying, you're verbalizing that you want this, but then not doing anything towards working towards it. Yeah, like, so you're not, saying, you're, not saying, sort of, you're not saying true to yourself. You're not saying true to yourself. And, and it like, you don't causes want more damage than people realize. 100%. It actually sets them fucking back 10 steps yeah, yeah, the yeah. other way because then they don't realize that they've done that. All of a sudden they're a failure because they haven't hit their goals. Yeah. And then you're further back than they fucking started yeah. in the first place because they said they wanted to achieve something they didn't want to truly achieve. They thought, all right, cool, that guy looks like he's doing well. And that's, I want what he's got. And that's when you end they up unhappy. don't want to put the fucking... That's, that's when you end up unhappy is like when you have that internal conflict of like, oh yeah, I want to do this thing. And then you're like, oh no, I'm not really sure. I don't want to do this thing. And then you're not taking the actions, but you're like, yeah, I do want it to someone. But then you actually don't want it. And you're like, oh, sure, do I really want to be doing this? Like that is where unhappiness comes from. It's like not being aligned with what it is that you actually want to do. Yeah. Like not yeah. like taking actions towards something that you don't want. Like mm. that's where internal conflict happens and that's when you end up unhappy is when you're constantly chasing something that actually you don't really want that much anyway. And it's not because it's something that's your idea and it's not because it's something that you actually want for yourself. It was someone else that told you, society was, that tells you that you want that thing, mm. you know? So here's a question then. So how do you find that thing that you actually, you truly want? Well, I think it comes back to what we were talking about at the start of the podcast, which is like working out what truly makes you happy. And I think we've, I think we've spoken about this in another episode. I don't know, I'm getting confused now. <laughs> um, but like working out what actually it is that makes you happy. Like if doing fitness stuff doesn't make you happy and you really don't care about what Be your careful body... careful here, what's he about to say? Go on, <laughs> no, but if, no, but if it doesn't really make you happy and you really do not give a flying fuck what other people think about you and you don't care about what shape you're in, then why would you set a fitness goal? You're just setting yourself up. You're just setting yourself up for unhappiness. Maybe in a few years' time, it might become a priority of yours. But if you're you're going to make yourself more unhappy by setting a goal of losing weight and then never taking any of the actions towards it and then okay. thinking of yourself as a failure okay. because you're setting yourself a goal that actually you really don't want that much. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just don't don't set yourself a goal that isn't something that you really want that much because you're just going to be more unhappy. And the whole point of goals is to work towards something that is going to make you happy. Mm. Don't set yourself up for failure from the beginning by picking a goal that maybe isn't your goal just because it's something that you think society or other people or other people around you are choosing as a goal. Mm -hmm. like don't set that as, a, as one of your goals just because of that. Maybe I'm talking from an advanced stage of goal setting, but you need to also be aware how all of these goals interlink. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So you can't just straight away write off fitness. You don't like, fit, like fitness. Like me, I don't enjoy fitness. I know I need to do it and I don't need to do it because it aligns with every single other one of my yeah, goals. 100%. You yeah. need to be focused. You need to look good. I want to be I want to be healthy. I want to be like the most effective person I can possibly be when I'm performing inside of work, outside of work. That's your goal. Of course it is, but <laughs> fitness then plugs into that. But that's, that's your goal. That's what yes. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's your what goal. Do you mean? You're, you're, both, you're both right, like, I think. Yeah, so. yeah, we are. No, 100%. We're, yeah, not, yeah. Saying, we're not saying yeah. different things, yeah, but yeah. that's your goal. What's if I'm, goal? if my, if I'm, so let's say Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos' goal was not to be the fittest. He, his goal was fucking total domination. Yeah. It wasn't be in shape. But he knows he needs to be fit. He to does be part now. Of that domination. He does now. Yeah. Look at he. he he's grew fucking an extra, sick he's, now. Yeah, he's fucking he's stacked fucking motherfucker now. Beast <laughs> mode. Yeah. yeah it's fucking Yeah, huge. Magic Jack's got that TRT. Got the hot little thing. He's he's making moves, man. He's winning. But for <laughs> however many years, his fucking burning desire was not I want to be in good shape mm -hmm. it came afterwards you know what I was saying earlier about intrinsic and, and extrinsic but That's his it. intrinsic fucking desire yeah. was I want to fucking turn this little fucking bookshop <laughs> <laughs> which is why you normally see founders in the early stages of the company walking around with a scruffy beard yeah. they've not changed their clothes because they don't give a fuck about any of that. All they care about yeah. is yeah. building them foundations. And I remember yeah. when me and Rye first started, until the foundations were there, we didn't give a fuck about anything apart from fucking making that shit bang. And then once you obviously get momentum, you can start bringing in the other values. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's like, but yeah, sorry. in the beginning stages, like don't set goals for yourself that don't align with what you really want. But also, one last bit, we've, we're really exhausted this hour. Time's ticking. 
I'm actually going to do something fancy at the piano, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All the sax. Um, but with the vision, is right. For, for us, we know what it is. We want to get the fuck out of here. We want to live the life, run the empire from wherever. I don't want to do while being creative. All the little bits and bobs. I also think it's good while setting them goals to build other areas of goals. So almost like not failovers because we never want plan B, but right, what can I build along the way that will help me get there? But I'm also building that on base layers. So building up a huge property portfolio on the side or doing whatever. It may not align with that. Oh, I suppose it does align with it actually that top vision, but you can have these sub visions that you're just building along the way as all, yeah, I keep contradicting myself. It was almost like a backup plan. Do you just get what I'm saying? I think I do. I th- well, I think, I think you're saying <laughs> that you've got a big vision, yeah. but that it you... doesn't have just to be one big vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you yeah. have multiple visions okay, along yeah. the way. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. And they all do kind of interlink, but they can be completely separate at the same time. I think they can be separate, but they're still linked to the overall goal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, to some degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Anything else anyone wants to add? I don't think so. I think we've. Uh... Covered everything you wanted to cover in our 36th attempt of trying to get this episode. <laughs> yeah. Finally managed to get a fucking hour done. Come Woo! on. It's been sick. I've enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm glad we managed to get it done without just sitting there laughing for 20 minutes. Definitely. <laughs> Very good episode. We are back, guys, and I will make sure that it happens much more regularly. We've proven now that we can do it. We just got to have Max with us. Magic Max. Wee. Shout out Magic Max. So, uh, yes, thanks very much, guys. Uh, we will be back very, very soon. We're going to try and get a couple more guests on. Um, so yeah and remember set big big humongous goals set big goals visualise them go out and achieve them go out and achieve them peace oh my god I cannot believe it.